Good afternoon. My name is Chris. My channel here is Chris Must List. Today I'm at home filming in Toronto. I haven't filmed, <laughs> I think I've only filmed one or two videos in Toronto over the course of my YouTube career, which is about three years. I'm waiting for my son to get off school, my eldest son, Tristan. Normally I'm traveling the world, but I'm born and raised in Toronto, and I know you folks, some of you folks want to see what Toronto is all about, so let me be the one that shows you my hood. Okay, my old hood, I don't live there anymore. Uh, so we're gonna drive down James Street, we're gonna eat at my old favorite restaurant, and I'm just gonna show you guys around. So if you're interested in Toronto, uh, hit that like, subscribe, and follow me on today's journey. Let's go. Okay, currently heading east down Eglinton, I picked up my eldest son, Tristan, what's happening? Hello, hi guys. Don't be shy. I'm not. He's not being shy. So Tristan just recently turned 18, so today I'm gonna walk through and show him where I used to live when I was 18. A little walk down memory lane, introduce you guys to a little history of uh, Chris before the must list. Uh, right now we're heading down Eglinton. We're gonna head to the Jamaican neighborhood, which is like back to back to back to back to back. Uh, Jamaican restaurant. We're gonna get some Jamaican to eat and then head down Jane Street and again walk in the footsteps of this old man right here. What do you got to say? Excited. Excited? What yeah. your final year of high school? What are you gonna do when you're you're done school in June? I don't know. You don't know yet? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Anybody watching when you were 18 did you know? I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was 18. I never would have thought I would be a, a 45 year old YouTuber. Uh, that's for sure um, But we're gonna get to know Tristan a little bit better. He's got to learn how to talk to that camera Hold let me see if you know how to hold it up. So say something now. I don't know what to say. Okay We are now on Eglinton West and we're approaching little Jamaica Anyone care to guess why they call this little Jamaica? Because <laughs> there's a bunch of Jamaicans here, yeah. Jamaican businesses, Jamaican restaurants, and I believe that uh, the Jamaican businesses have been here like 50 plus years. I'm 45, and I remember I used to go to this school for night school, York Memo, um, and I used to come eat Jamaican food all the time. So, uh, what are we gonna go with, goat? Yeah, curry goat. Your favorite? Yeah, curry goat. Yeah, me too, I like curry goat. Add a little spice. Uh, so we're gonna stop off, grab something to eat, and then continue today's adventure all throughout the areas which I used to navigate, live uh, at when I was his age, 18. If you guys haven't tried a curry goat from a Jamaican restaurant, you're missing out on life. So we look to the right, a lot of beauty supply stores. Funny, I haven't seen any Jamaican flags yet. As we get a little, little higher up the hill, right where that car is stopping, we're gonna stop right around there. Right where they're going. We're going to the same spot. Hello. Can I? It's me. You remember? Because I want to promote your business. Can I get a uh, curry goat? Sure. Please. What size? Uh, what size? A small for me. Please. And what rice would you like with it? A uh, rice and peas. Rice and peas on the small also. A bottle. Yeah. I'll try a. Uh, you have a spicy patty? Sure. Yeah, I'll try it. How many? You want one of them? Yeah. Two of them. You want a drink? Uh, yeah, can I get one of the island sodas? The Food smells damn good in the car. We're not going to eat in the car because my wife will kill both of us. Yes? Yes, I'd rather live for tomorrow. Yeah, so, Mom, we're not eating in the car. We're going to stop down the street, get out, and show you guys what this meal tastes like and how much it costs. Here, Little Jamaica, Toronto. So as we're driving down Trithui, 
on the right hand side this is like notorious buildings here in Toronto I'm gonna go you I'm gonna bring you through the areas that people are afraid of um, these are the Chathui buildings you can see they're pretty pretty dreary and right across the street is the police station for obvious reasons but I'll show you guys what the rougher neighborhoods look like here in Toronto So if you're looking for like lower rent, you don't want to pay too much. This is where you would be living. Uh, growing up, I had a lot of friends that lived in these buildings. Martha Eaton Way. So if you're from Toronto, I'm sure you, you know of the buildings. Maybe in a future video, I'll, I'll go into greater detail when the weather's nicer and just get out of the car and walk around but for now we'll do a drive-by Henry lives right behind these buildings we'll stop and eat oh at Henry's wow. house it's cold outside I called my friend Henry I said you gonna come on camera he said no I'm shy so I said I'm just gonna pull up on you bring some food and eat at his house. It's cold. It's cold outside. It's like one degree out. A couple days ago I was in Louisiana swimming in the bayou. Now I'm uh, three layered up and still cold back home here in Toronto. So we go straight. We're going to hit Jane Street. Jane is the next major street uh, where I grew up and definitely the most infamous street in Toronto. When you say Jane Street, it sparks fear in the senior citizens from around Toronto. <laughs> I guarantee if I asked people on the street what's the most dangerous neighborhood, everyone would say Jane and Finch. And, and although there's definitely danger, um, I mean, if you're not looking for it, you're not causing trouble. If you're not causing trouble, no one is out to get you. Let's go find Henry. So this is Chathui and Jane Street buildings. Come in, come in. Come in. Come in. They're all from you? Here, have some goat. Goat? I just ate a little bit right now. But you didn't know Henry's a chef. I just, look, I just warmed up some food right now. You, you don't want to have that, any? And there's the... You're good? The rice and thing there. Oh, let me open the free one. And there's the... There's the other picantes that you like. Gracias. Some of them yours there. Look at that, twenty-five dollars. Oh, that was one of them. Yeah. Oh. It's more? oh shit, we had so much hot sauce, right? So there's. That one. That one was good Henry, you ever lived on Jane Street? Me, I never have gone. Out oh of yeah, you lived on Jane Street. You never I have, left. I have never gone out of Jane Street. There's a little crunchy pork. As a child, what? where did you grow up? I hear, around here. You know, this area, buddy. My this whole is, life. My video today is to walk. Okay, it's okay, buddy. Thank you. To walk through my old footsteps. He's 18 now. He's you 18. believe he's 18 already? He's a grown man already, yeah. Mmm. Time doesn't wait for nobody. Henry, grab a fork. Try that. Man, so soft. All right, buddy. I'll take a little piece. Thank you. Try that. Take more than that. That's okay, buddy. Tell me what you think. I already ate a lot of time. It's soft. It's good. Oh, so soft. It's good, what do you think? So good. It was about forty dollars for the two of us to eat two small. Other than two patties, drinks. With two patties, drinks. So I like water. Really top of it. You know, Henry and I used to sell clothes on the street, and like go business to business, hustling clothes out of the trunk of the car. Broke belly in our shirts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the broke belly in our shirts. Everybody like loved those. You said. When he was very small, I used to do silk screen in the kitchen of my house, like put different slogans and stuff like that on the t-shirts, fill up hockey bags full of product, and then hit the streets right from the trunk. Selling out like pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Selling out like pancakes. Every now and then somebody will send me a picture and they still have one of the old shirts. So Henry and I used to hustle, hustling on the street. Yeah. I want to bring you to Ming's, your favorite. We'll go, we'll go next time. Different time. You got the Jay-Z look. That's what Jay-Z's hair looks like. 
<laughs> well, that's how it looks like, but I'm not here. <laughs> have a shot. Wake up. Look, we this don't is, have a shot. This, I can. I'm driving, but. Brugal, the Dominican drink of choice. What about Mama Juana? You don't have none? Yeah, I have a Mama Juana. You want a Mama Juana? This is an educational video. No, I don't want anything, man. But I'm trying to show you guys. So Dominican, if you guys have never tried this, if you like, like, it's not spiced rum. It's just dark colored rum. Really, really good, Brugal. If you're in Toronto, you can get this at the liquor store. Mama Juana's here, but, but Mama Juana, let me see. Oh, it's too big? Yeah, it's too big to put it. Oh, oh. <laughs> Where is it? Yeah, yeah so let me do it. It's okay. Yeah, so Mama Juana, explain what it is. That <laughs> what's inside? What's inside? Some yeah. roots, some roots, and but roots from where? Roots from I don't know where, but I know that when you take a shot when it's full, I guess you if it makes you feel like you already drink the whole bottle of rum in one shot if it's cured properly. Yeah. So, yeah but, but it's supposed to help men with uh, erectile deficiency. Well, yeah, there's a possibility it does. <laughs> <laughs> so what Henry is not telling you is there's there's roots from a certain tree in the Dominican Republic. They put it in a bottle, then you put your rum and you let it sit. You put honey on yours too. You put a little honey or no? Yeah, they put honey. Put a little put, bit of honey. They put honey, they put... Um, it's supposed to help men if their men is not working. Uh, you, but if, if even if that's not the problem, if you just want to have a good night, all night. Yeah, <laughs> but, but then if you drink too much, then you're going to have to go to the hospital to, go to, go to, go to sleep. Because otherwise it doesn't go to sleep after that. <laughs> So you guys got to try that out. If you have a Dominican friend, ask for Mama Juana. Not marijuana, Mama Juana. <laughs> So you have the luxury of not growing up in a neighborhood like this. This is how daddy grew up. When I was young, my parents had a house. But when I moved out on my own, I moved to this neighborhood right away. When I was your age, 18 years old. When I was going through high school, I had already... He's in uh, grade 12 now. Yeah. So when I was in grade 12, I was already living alone. Um, and back then we had OAC as well, like grade 13. I think still have it nowadays, but it's just not, um, it depends, public schools do it, but I don't think my school doesn't do it, uh, I know schools in Guelph and Hamilton do it, okay. but it's mainly public schools, I know Chaminade does it though, Chaminade's in like front of the whole Catholic one side too, the, the, which is what the high school you went to. Yeah, so. he's telling me what high school I went yeah. to, thank you. No problem, sure, so. anytime. <laughs> so yeah, here's uh, Jane Street, we're now officially on Jane, gotta represent and we're gonna go to Weston as well. Weston Road is another um, neighborhood that's known for for wrongdoings. This is where my grandmother lived my whole life. Uh, my dad's mother right here. This is the building. Coming up to Jane and Lawrence and, and two lights. Just curious, anybody watching today's video from Jane Street? Uh, connect the dots, tell me where whereabouts on Jane Street were you from? And if you're not from Toronto, this is probably the first time you heard of Jane Street, but if you do a Google search, like Jane and Finch or Jane and Lawrence, Jane and Wilson, you'll, you'll find it's a very high crime area here in Toronto. We're about 15, 20 minutes away from downtown Toronto, so this is a little bit out of the way. It's known as the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area. Uh, the area itself, I, I believe, is called uh, North York. It is North York. I know that. It's factual. I know that. You get all kinds of food, everything from Jamaican to African. Look how colorful. This is something new. I didn't see this color. A lot of beaten up shops as well. This building right here to the right, this is where I lived when I was my son's age. 1755 Jane Street. pulled in and it's crazy because when I lived here I had a very expensive car didn't make any sense I was living in like the lowest cost rent and my vehicle was quite expensive BMW always wanted to look good wow the memories I probably lived here for like five six seven years And even back then, uh, I was an entrepreneur, um, working for myself, hustling, creating stuff, or buying it wholesale and selling it. Jane Street. We're going to head down to Weston, see if I can get my hair cut. My son has a 
I think it gets there. <laughs> Got some, sorry. What, what do you say? You're waiting for the right day? The right time? Oh, I, I just, <laughs> without offending anyone, I just don't want to go to the place we're going right now. I can't cheat on my barber. Yeah. I can't cheat on my barber. So we're on Jane, gonna head down to West End, check out my barber shop, hopefully get a haircut, then I'll come back down Jane. We will get out of the car, walk around a bit. But here it is, 1755 Jane Street. Gas station is the same, the bank. It used to be the bank across the street, but that is no longer there. school is on this street right here <clears throat> so growing up in my elementary school like I was one of the only white kids in in the school period George's if you're from Jane area you'll know George has been around a long time and I often get comments even till today like when I visit various let's say poverty stricken neighborhoods or hoods or ghettos I get the comment like oh you know you're the privileged white kid that that comes in and, and takes video get called a cult culture vulture um, look, I'm gonna be white for the rest of my life, there's no doubt. But I grew up in very similar neighborhoods to the ones that I, I go visit and film today. So it's not like, um, yeah, I'm driving a Maserati now, but I worked very, very hard for this. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't given to me, I'll put it that way. I love my mom and dad very much, but everything that we have was uh, worked for, not given to. Um, so, I mean, this is where I came from. We're gonna get out and talk to people and I'm gonna create a, a unique video. Something a little different. This right here on the right is a hospital. This on the left was a university for doctors and nurses. But when I was a child, it was abandoned. Uh, it was completely empty. It's almost like one day everybody up and left. So all the equipment, the surgery stuff, the tables, everything was left there. But for years and years, the building itself was abandoned. No, no humans. Uh, so I used to come in here first by myself and I mean before I was 18 younger uh, and just the curiosity I guess of, of going through an abandoned building and then I would bring some friends along with me like hey come let's go meet up at the abandoned building so one day I'd say I'm between 16 and 18 one day it was cold outside and I went inside with some friends and we lit a little fire to stay warm and somebody must have seen it one of the neighbors must have seen it and called the police so I looked out the window because I heard and this was all boarded up looks better now than it did um, I looked outside the window because I heard sirens and I it was police all the way around this whole building right here I went up to the roof to look down to try to figure out which way I can escape without getting caught and there's no way there's too many police so as I came back into the building, and I'm laughing now, I was troublesome back then. Um, when I was coming down, I was trying to find places to hide, but I heard the dogs barking, like the police dogs. So I put my hands up. I wasn't doing anything wrong other than being in an abandoned place. I wasn't doing any drugs or nothing like that. Um, whereas my friends tried to hide, I gave myself up. I'm like, I'm not gonna get away from a dog. So I put my hands up and they held the dog back and I was arrested. Uh, for being in an abandoned building uh, But my friends tried to hide and I remember the dogs getting a hold of them and they were getting beaten up pretty good by the dogs um, When I went to court because of my age I, I did I don't know what I had to do maybe a hundred hours of community service or something along those lines, but It's like the history of uh, going into abandoned buildings. I haven't been in trouble um, Except for Cuba and going to jail in Cuba. I haven't been in trouble with the law since those days so uh, really changed changed my direction in life and to my barber shop that I went to as a kid it still exists today and the barber that runs it has been my barber for probably the last 20 years I know he knew me from my hustling days selling t-shirts and suits and whatever I, whatever else I could buy at wholesale we're gonna head down and get a little cleanup and see if we can talk to him as well so my very first apartment ever, young boy was right up there, here at Weston Road in Church Street. 
Not much has changed. The pet store is still there. China China is still there. Looks like Mike is there cutting hair. I'm gonna see if I can get a haircut here. There's the mobile store. Can find out about your hair for what the cost would be. For the first time in my life, my grandparents used to have this uh, business here for like 50 years. For the first time, uh, the sign has been changed. Looks like it's a Jamaican place now, a Jamaica place. Brings back so many memories as a child being here. It looks like they're not quite open. My grandparents have passed away 12 years ago, but even though the store has sat abandoned for 12 years, the name Allen Scottish Butcher uh, remained. Dentist altering, still the same. China, China, still the same. How long have you been here, Mike? 23 years. 23 years. You haven't changed. <laughs> hasn't, hasn't aged. You know, he was a baby. I was coming before he was a baby. How's everything? You got thin. On purpose? There's a little bit of health issues. Yeah. Yeah. You're okay? I'm fighting the fight. Fighting the fight. I go to the hospital to get a uh, checkup maybe two, three times a week. Yeah. They're testing me for the colon, they're testing me for cancer. They're testing me for all these things. Did you feel any symptoms or anything? You don't, you don't come up with anything. The only symptoms I have is that it's my nerves. I have a nerve movement in my leg. You see my leg, like twitching. There's my nerves. My nerves in my vein. Yeah. You can take a picture. Like, yeah, yeah. You can see it's it's um, it's very big. They're all big down here, right yeah. up along my side of my leg. So. But how are you feeling though? I'm feeling okay, but the only thing I feel is, is the pain from the nerves. You look good for 85, 90. No, Mike has always looked the same since I met him. I change month by month. Get yeah, fat, then skinny, then fat. Mike always looked the same. Nothing has changed in here. Everything has remained the same. Before Mike ran the shop, I, I came here. There's a little old man named Tony. He used to cut my hair here. I guess Tony is long gone. I used to sell clothes here at Mike's shop. Suits. He was the, the worst. <laughs> what do you call it when you want a cheaper price? Like, come on, you need to call. Come on, Chris. Yeah. What, what's the I price? Used to talk you down. Yeah, talk him down. Gotta res gotta respect the hustle. <laughs> yes, sir. So I, I find at the time you had a soft spot for that. Yeah, for you. For me, because I used to talk you down. I'm not gonna. I should mention. Don't. Only gonna do the sides of the back. I'm not, yeah. Yeah. Let my hair grow a little bit. I used to bring a, a whole hockey bag of clothes here and be selling. Yeah. Hustling. Suits, my jackets, running through. I was in, yeah. I was in El Paso, Texas, and I seen it on the border. You were there too? Yeah. I, I thought I saw you trying to sneak across. Yeah, I was sneaking across. <laughs> I was trying, I was on the camera watching you yeah. and your friend. Give the waters to the people That was in California. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. How are you doing? Good, good. Man, it's been a while since I've been here. Time goes by so fast. Sorry? How long ago? It must have been. At least two months. Two months? Two months. Months? No. Year. At least a year. That's how I've been here with at least a year. Feel better? No, my hair, my hair. What do you call this haircut? You know the birds try to land when we're in the park? The birds try to land on the top of his head. Look. He doesn't like when I tell people that. I cut the top, but that was like two months ago. Two years ago. Really? Yeah, it's been real long. All right, my friends. Mike, final words. How do we make the world a better place? We need peace. We need what do we need? What we need 
is love, for people to love one another and respect one another. Love is the key for all things. Yes. And peace. Peace will come. With love, peace is next in line. Mike, thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Tomorrow. All right, eh? Nice to see you. All right, guys. Good to see you. Right? You, you got me motivated. I got to lose some weight. I got to lose some weight now. All right, dude. All right. All right, eh? All right. Thanks, Mike. If you guys are ever around Weston and Church Street, the barber shop right here in the corner. Again, that used to be my apartment. Not this one, the one facing the other direction. But we're going to continue the walk. <laughs> when I lived here, I worked in a warehouse, the midnight shift. And on the side, I was still hustling clothes. And I hated my job. I knew it was never going to be permanent. It was only temporary. Okay. Thank you for your patience. We're going to go to Jane Street. One, two, three. Yeah, it's 527. Rush hours like 4 till 6, 4 till 7. Toronto has the worst congestion, the worst traffic in North America. So like statistically, if you type in worst rush hour traffic, it's us. The most cars on the street, the, le the least number of like lanes on the highway. So our 401 is the worst highway in North America when it comes to traffic. Every construction, it takes 10 years to do. And look at this, how it's laid out, like the buildings. You can see the, this is Falstaff here coming up. Also another neighborhood that's known as a bad neighborhood. The buildings all look the same. This plaza on the right is a perfect example of uh, the diversity here. Uh, we got, look at the different types of, well, we got cash money, Western Union, Golden Star. I don't know what that is, but I see there's Turkish food. There's shawarma, which is Middle Eastern. There's pho, which is Vietnamese. There's African right next to it. So, I mean, you, in that one plaza, you could basically eat any type of food from around the world. Because often when I travel, people will say, well, have you ever eaten a goat before? Or have you ever eaten Chinese or pho or whatever the case may be? And there's no doubt, I've eaten it all. In Toronto, we can eat anything. Uh, we can find and buy and eat anything. And very similar to like New York and other parts around the world, like the ghetto buildings always look the same. The color of the building, you know, it's, it hasn't been washed in a while. These buildings here are very like uh, symbolic of Toronto hood type buildings. We're at Jane and Wilson right now. Don't know what that beep was for. I was nowhere near the curb. Ooh, saying I'm too close, yet I'm far away. KFC, that's new, the KFC on the corner. I swear that's been there. Nope. Well, when was the last time you've been here? Wow, well, it's been a while, maybe a year. This was my, my mall as a child, Sheridan Mall. $2 Tuesday movies. So you can come to the movie theater here and get a $2 Tuesday movie. Here we don't have bills for a $1 bill and $2 we have. Do we have one here? A Toonie. Yeah, we do. So for example, this is a $2. It's called Toonie. And our one dollar bill has a, a bird on it, a loon. Is there one there? So that's a one dollar coin. It's our national bird, a loon. A black and white bird that dives deep for fish. Really not much. We're gonna head down to the Jane and Finch Mall. And we'll get out and we'll walk around, show you what York Gate Mall looks like. You know, Carlos filmed the, the commercial for York Gate Mall, 
friend Carlos. Have you seen it? Oh, uh, no. Is Actually, it? come yeah. to York Gate Mall. Come oh, to yeah, York yeah, Gate yeah. Mall. Wow, this is all new. These buildings. These buildings were there, but these houses were not. This is where Jesse used to live, my cousin. Back here, I used to play hockey for this team, Downsview. We were, I, I was here not too long ago, actually. The Downsview Beavers. Yeah, I was here not too long ago because I was one of the managers for our, my high school hockey team. So we came here. They were going against, uh, I don't see the beaver anymore. We used to be black and yellow, down to beavers. Looks something different, different colors. Look at that, since 1953. I probably haven't been here since I was your age. It's been that long. And my first official job ever in my existence was a hockey referee right here at this arena. When I was maybe 14 or 15, I got my license to referee. That was my first paying job. So we're just about here. We're in the Jane and Finch area. So all of these buildings from York Woods on here are, are well known as being a dangerous neighborhood. This plaza, it's funny, I remember the last time I pulled into plaza to the convenience store, guy came right in my face saying, we know you are an undercover police officer. And I laughed it off and uh, they got quite upset and they were certain that I was a, a police officer. Not too many white male men come to this neighborhood uh, shopping. So here we are, we're here. Jane and Finch. Again, guys, in the comment section. Ooh, I'm nowhere near the car. Stop it, stop it. Park assist, I'm good. I need no assistance, no park assistance. There must be something on my sensor causing that. But if you guys are from Toronto, everybody knows Jane and Finch. If you're from Canada, I'm sure you've heard Jane and Finch on the news many times. But for those um, other parts of the world, those people that are watching, this is Jane and Finch, Toronto and Canada's most notorious neighborhood for crime. Uh, there's no doubt it happens. If you Google Jane and Finch, you will see uh, countless, numerous murders, robberies, etc. Um, I grew up not too far away. I feel very safe here. I come here quite often. I come to eat, come to hang out, come to see old friends, so it doesn't doesn't phase me any. Uh, but there's no doubt this is the spot for crime in uh, Toronto. One of the spots. I don't want to make this a competition as to who's the worst, who's the second worst. But Jane and Finch is definitely on the map. So I think I was asking people, have you heard of Jane and Finch? Have you been to Jane and Finch? Uh, maybe you're like me, did you grow up in the area? Le le leave a comment down below, let me know what's happening. Now after driving uh, my father-in-law's, oh, I'm gonna have to fix that sensor. After driving my father-in-law's SUV for the last two months through the US, the sensitivity on the gas in this car it's very, very difficult for me to drive without jerking the brakes. It's just such a, such a sensitive ride. Who's sleeping? Come on, no, you're not. What do you call that? Closing my eyes. I just missed my entrance because it looked a little too steep. We'll turn into the mall and take a look. My son said he's never been to uh, Jane and Finch Mall. There's two malls diagonally across from each other, but we'll go take a look. Your Gate Mall, come to Your Gate Mall. Carlos, I'm gonna have to find your commercial and put it embedded in today's video. I'm sure you're gonna be happy. Your little singing and dancing, Carlos. Le Union, Le Union. Okay, we're gonna stop and enter Your Gate Mall. Let's go. Let's put it in your pocket, I don't know. 
see that this is a custom vinyl wrap so as the sun hits it various angles you get different colors when it's dark outside and the clouds are out you can't see it but right now you see how it's sparkling a mean looking car vicious ferocious almost like a wild panther minus the color see where the sensor has been pushed in so that's what's causing Your first time? Yeah. York Game Mall. Are your expectations high? Nope. They shouldn't be. Got food upstairs. Downstairs you got rent as you go type stuff. I haven't been here probably five, ten years. Only for the liquor store. So what's your first impression? It seems it kind of gives a woodbine. You know woodbine? Yeah, but the people watching don't know woodbine. What about the uh, fashion here? High, high fashion, 25% off, $22 if anyone's interested. See here you got financing in, in any uh, low earnings or income neighborhood you have shops like this where you rent to own. So if you don't have the money to pay, let's say for a couch, you can pay a monthly fee basically for the rest of your life. In one day you'll you'll have ownership and the moment you stop paying believe me people will come my friend Chris used to work there and he his job was to come he's a big guy knock on your door and take the furniture back if you hadn't paid for it and you know malls like this have a certain kind of smell to them that it's hard to describe but we'll call it a smell of many dishes from around the world it's a very international type smell like look at the real welcoming type stores but if you're from the neighborhood this is all you need you get your your drugs here you get your fashion I've never seen anybody dress like this so I don't know who's buying this stuff see there's the LCBO this is the only reason I've ever come to the mall in a long time So our liquor store is government run. Here's a look at this, another easy home is another spot where you don't buy the stuff, you don't buy the items, you rent it month to month. So like this for example, you get the TV for $22 a week. You get a 50 inch TV LG. Look at this, $22 a week. But if you look real small, it's like you're paying for the rest of your life. So what do you think? Impressed? No? Nothing you want to buy for yourself? See any fashion that's fashionable? My friend, how long have you been coming to York Gate Mall? No. No? See, everyone here is real friendly. Uh, they like to share their experiences and their wealth and knowledge about the community. Fashion is like, this is Jane and Finch fashion. Like, I've never seen this anywhere else. Look. Paisley for $25. This is the look, the Jane and Finch look. Hold the camera, let me see how you hold the camera. Talk to the camera in front of people. Let me see how you feel. Not in here, no, no, don't worry. Nobody, nobody cares. <laughs> Teaching them how to be a YouTuber and you gotta be able to ignore, here, for my Jamaicans. You gotta be able to ignore everyone around and just uh, do what you do. What about a nice Canadian hat? No? Canadian flag hat? I'm not a hat person. No. So tell me, you what? You don't feel comfortable holding the camera in front of people? What about now? No, Come on, just go. Put it up. Show that you have the courage. Hey, guys, have you ever tried holding the camera in front of yourself? In front of people? It takes the balls. You need to have balls. Huh? Big boss. Yes, how are you doing? I want to see you uh, Chris from Kingston or something like that. You, Chris, yeah. Yeah. Kingston. Judge the scene. Hey, watch a show a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. Today I'm showing Jane Street, Jane and Finch. Judge, so this live? This is not live. It's gonna be live tomorrow. Uh, all right. We got the whole of Jamaica. Where are you from in Jamaica? Spain town, man. Okay. You Spanish know town. Come on. Yeah. Everybody. 
Well, the boss, you know, the boss, I do the right thing. I'm a trouble. Yeah. And the monk's great youth, too, you see? Yeah. See, I'm running out of the greatest thing, I so. I say a word. Pull you outside. I appreciate Big that, man. Boss. Yes, sir. You know. Nice to meet you. Know. So, you can see, in uh, Toronto, we got Jamaica. Mini, mini, mini backyard Jamaica. Uh, amazing. Whenever somebody sees me on the street and shows appreciation, sorry. Uh, it's all love. It's all love. So what I'm trying to teach my son is time for him to start a YouTube channel this summer as we travel. But the first step is you got to be able to hold the camera up with confidence. So hold that camera up with confidence. Oh my God! Okay. Pretend that you're starting today's show. How do you introduce yourself? Look, look. You got to be. Uh, it's got to be in your face. Okay, hold on. There's a car right behind. It doesn't matter. There's, hold a, car, it up. there's a car behind us. Give me a second. Matter. Hold it up. Okay, I'm holding it up. Don't worry. Look hold right it up. The okay, and it's bright as hell. Stop. Stop for a second. Okay. Come. Hold this up. Yes. You go. Talk to me now. Introduce yourself. No, I'm too, pussy. I'm too pussy. We gotta get you on YouTube, but you gotta start by the very simple talking to the camera. It's just the area. Everyone's so judgmental. What do you mean the area? Jaina Finch? Yes. The, it's scaring you? A little bit. Scaring you from talking? Yes, a little bit. For what? Just a tiny bit. Nobody cares. Maybe a little bit. Just a little bit. No, nobody cares though. You see, they already forgot me that yeah, I was there I with the camera. You don't think in the future you could do YouTube? Uh, no, I mean like it's just, it's just like I don't know. It's just it's just worrying about the confrontation part. Like I just feel what like, confrontation? I don't know. I just feel like I feel like they would, you know. Well, if you're walking through, the, just, someone's gonna bother you. Yeah. Your your dad's a ninja. You don't have to worry about any of that. Ninja. Here we go. If anyone's looking for a blowout sale, we got coffee table set, living room set, dining room set, bedroom set, mattress and box set. Here. Nobody wants to set the alarm. Oh, Your gate mall. All right. So, can we so? No, we got to get you talking. No. Walking and talking, buddy. I brought talking. you up. I brought you up for a reason today. Yes, I've talked. No. Your gate mall. Come to your gate mall. Get the graffiti up there. No, downtown. So that is it, guys. This is Jane Street. Very diverse neighborhood. If you were to grab 100 people on the side of the street, we'd basically have 100 different countries uh, of people, which I love. I love the diversity. If, if I were to speak openly about Toronto, what I love most about it is diversity. Um, the crime rate is relatively low compared to other places in the world. People are, are gen, generally friendly. Like, they say, hey, hi, what's up? You having a good day? Those kind of conversations normally occur. At least for me, I talk to everybody, even without a camera. So I like that. Um, I also like that as a Canadian, I, I feel like I'm welcome anywhere in the world. I'm gonna make a ride on Eddystone. There is a, a, a little spot, a oh, secret man. spot. It's right there too. Okay. It's probably not that secret. Uh, for those in the neighborhood, but Camisos. There's two locations in Toronto. I've been coming since I was a child. When I was out partying all night, when I was older than Tristan, uh, we'd come here and eat 24-hour veal or meatball or rice ball. But my wife, she loves the little cannolis, the desserts. So, you going in? Yes, are you coming in with me? Mm -hmm. Listen. It's up to Tristan now to shoot the content. Make sure he shows all the camisos. Ah. Talks to the woman. It, this is it's, it's you. Do I gotta you point ready? at the woman too? Let's just. I gotta point at the woman. Your chance to vlog. I gotta Make point sure at you're the woman. Looking guys. in the lens. Yeah, the lens. sorry, it's really bright right now. Okay, this is your first. Okay. Vlog you're coming in with me, right? No, no. You're not coming in with me. No. Get ten. Uh, get half and half. Five big ones and five small. You're not coming in with me. Okay, go. Come in with me, please. Let's go. Come in with your chance. Make daddy proud. Oh my gosh. See, I'm telling you, hold that lens. All right, guys. <laughs> Can you please come in with me? Come in with me. Come in with me, please. Record on your phone at least. Record on your phone. Okay. All right, guys. He left me. He left me out. He left me out. He left me out. Look, he's over there. He's over there. He left me out. Thank you. So, what if we 
beginning. Cannolis. Sorry if I wanted to get some of these. Do you have the small ones too, or? We only have these size ones, so they're four dollars each. Four dollars each. Can I just grab all of them, the rest of them? All the cannolis. Yeah, all the cannolis. Can I just leave it on the counter? Uh, oh, you guys don't have any? You guys don't have any cheese balls? No, we have meatballs, no rice balls. Oh, no rice balls? Ah, uh, that's okay. Don't worry. I'll just get that. No worries. I wanted the uh, rice ball, guys. I have no cheese, but no rice ball. Alright guys, look, he's still sitting in the car, but package secured. Oh, you got the wrong ones. What do you mean? You didn't have the small ones no, too? No, he just had these. Oh, those are big. And he didn't have rice balls. I was going to get a rice ball, but... Yeah. How much was that? Uh, 22. Four each. Kisco. Where you want to put it in the trunk? Put it in the trunk, you don't have to carry it. We're going... Still drive home. We'll check out. Oh, he turned it off, off and on. It's only been running 35 seconds. I'm curious what he recorded. What happened? It's only been recording 35 seconds. Uh, no, I just turned it. I just turned it back on. I just turned it off while I was paying. Why? Pardon? Because it was awkward. I was just holding it and for just these, just like. Got fingering for the cash. Okay, okay. But how do you feel you did um, as a vlogger, one to ten? Well, it was a very short interaction, so I mean, like, there wasn't really much. Did you show the the viewer the inside? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not really. Wait, kind of. What it, about the, it, it wasn't a big Camisos. Did, did you show them the name of the business? Oh shit. No, it's oh the stars, the stars, the sun is really shining. Yeah. You thought I did? This is your job. Well, I thought you really did before. I'm gonna like, test really you every day. I'm Camisos. curious to see. You guys gotta tell me how he did in the, no, the comments no, section. No, no. But out of ten, what do you think? Uh, probably give it like a seven. Seven out of ten? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty good then. No, six and a half. Uh, six and a half. First I'm time. This way. I don't know. I, w I thought this was the other camisas, so I thought it would be much bigger. You gotta work with what you got. Small camisas. That's sun. There's not, there's not really much to show around in there. It's just I know, but for people around the world, everything is, you know, just curiosity. Show, like, what kind of... It's, like, interactive. Like, it's, like, I can say something and then get an immediate response. So you're saying it's easier if you're live? I feel like, for me, it would be... It would be... Because I already have experience with streaming because of my video games. Like, I, I stream, I, people talk to me, and I talk to them back, like, as I'm... It's, I already have the experience of that. But it's just because it's, like... I don't know, like I feel like it's just like I say something and I get an immediate response back rather than me waiting for a response for like in a comment section. Like it's like, it's like I'm actually talking, like it's like I'm actually talking to a person rather than like talking to an object. But know? it just takes practice. I don't know. Once you've done it a little. To me it just feels easier through life. Yeah, it's not about easier. Or harder. not easier, it just feels more comfortable. Okay, I'm heading back down Weston Road and Weston itself is a a very prominent location for those from Toronto. You know, Drake sang about Weston on a, a few occasions. And this is Weston Road. I'm on Weston and this is Weston, where I got my haircut earlier at Mike's Barbershop. That was Weston.
I once rented this home as well when I was in high school. Had enough money for rents, but not enough money for heat. So I remember sleeping near the oven well, with it open in the winter months. So we're on our way back to uh, downtown Toronto. On the way, we're gonna stop uh, for a last stop at my Nana and Pops Cemetery, the headstone. Every time I pass down the street, let's say 90% of the time when I pass down the street, I like to stop for a few moments and uh, pay my respects. My my Nana and Pop, uh, my son got to meet them. Do you remember yeah, at all? I was really young, though. You were probably, what, three years old? Yeah. I remember um, Pop would give me um, Yeah. I don't remember those. And I, especially on this long drive through the USA, uh, I don't want to say I was seeing things, but definitely brought, you have nothing but time, right? I'm, I'm listening to music, but music gets boring. So I think about growing up in childhood and my, my Nana and Pop, and they meant so much to me. Um, you know, they came from London or from Liverpool uh, in England to Canada, to Toronto with my mom, started a business and work ethic is something they always had and I remember my grandparents before they passed uh, they would always applaud my entrepreneurship but they were also always ready when I failed uh, there were so many times I'd be so embarrassed to tell my family that I'm not doing well uh, and there's also a time I opened up a sneaker store in downtown Toronto selling shoes and custom clothing for uh, for regular folks and celebrities alike um, and there were times where I couldn't I couldn't pay rent and eat at the same time. It was one or the other. So my grandparents would always, always, always uh, pass by like on a Sunday with, with big loads of groceries. There was not a day that I would go by uh, without having something to eat. My grandparents uh, looked after me. And, and they would always tell me like failure was a part um, of building a business. And it's funny because most people... I will tell you the importance of ownership, like owning a home. Whereas my grandparents would say, own a business. When that business is successful, you can buy as many homes as you want. Uh, and it always stuck with me and I love them so much. Nana and Pop, um, this is, uh, we're here. This is where they were buried. And I have three children, Tristan here at 18. We got Avery at 15. Both of them got to spend time with my grandparents. Uh, but again, they were both so young, they probably don't remember much. So I drive and pay my respect. This is not just for the video. Actually, it's what I remember. I come here uh, quite often. I, yeah. I remember one time we were having um, a get together at Nana and Pop's place. And I was hiding in the kitchen, like the living room and kitchen, and I wanted, mom said I couldn't have ice cream, but Nana was like, do you want ice cream? So I was like, yeah. And so she gave me like a, like a, like a big, like bowl of ice cream. Mm. And then my mom saw, she's like, okay, at least just no extra sprinkles. So you know what Nana did? She gave me like the whole thing of sprinkles mm -hmm. and I just poured the whole thing all over the thing. So I had like a mountain of sprinkles on top of like um, my ice cream. Oh, yeah, I was like, well, I remember from Nana. It's funny, as kids, we remember the, the silliest things. I remember my grandmother, um, when I was young, younger than, than Tristan. You know, I used to collect cards, hockey cards, basketball cards, baseball cards. And I used to go get autographs from uh, the players. I would stand outside of the stadium or I'd meet them at the airport or the hotel. And I remember one day, uh, my grandmother had me and we were walking through Weston. And I, and I was, I built up the courage to ask my grandmother if she could buy me a pack of baseball cards. You know, my dad would always be like, ah, oh, that's a waste of money, it's not wasting money. So I built up the, the courage to ask my grandma, like, Nana, can you buy me a pack of cards? Because we we're in the store right beside the dentist and you could get them. And my grandmother turned to me and I, I remember with like disbelief, I remember her turning to the store owner. And she, she's like, how much for the whole box? Of, of the cards and I'm like no way no way am I getting a box and I remember it was like $90 or $100 and my grandmother's like give me two boxes and I was in tears I was so excited my I went to tell my friends this and it was like unheard of that anybody has ever bought a box of cards we were begging our family just for one pack and my grandmother flexed her muscles and she bought me <laughs> two full 
boxes of cards. And again, it's weird how we remember as kids the simplest things. I spent so much time, I lived with my grandparents at a, at a certain time throughout high school in their house and and to the moment they left, I was I was there and I missed them immensely. Never got in an argument again with my grandparents ever. I, always the utmost respect for them. Just uh, incredible people. And here we are. This is their their tombstone. When I come with my kids, they go out. Um, younger kids, like Ella and Avery, go out and talk. Amazing. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one that wonders what happens after uh, we leave planet Earth. Does something happen? We all hope it happens, but I mean, there's no guarantee. It's one of the reasons why I believe, like, just do good while you're here and uh, try your hardest. Because we just don't know. Tristan, can you go there? It's toppled, like the plants, the pot has toppled. Maybe you can just stand it up properly. And I have a wonderful family that surrounds me, you know, very good relationship with my mom and dad. And my in-laws are the best. Like my wife's parents are the best. My kids, we're very, very close. So looking back, time just goes by so, so quick. Sharing the ups and downs of life. And although I'm not embarrassed of anything I said in today's video, everybody has their own journey in life. Some have it more difficult than others. I'll never be one to claim that my life was overly difficult. It wasn't. Some of the decisions I made in life made, like the, some of the decisions I made in my life made it more difficult. For example, being an entrepreneur and, and trying to run multiple businesses, not easy. On YouTube right now, it might seem fun for those on the outside. It's definitely not easy. Um, you know, being persistent and consistent and leaving my family to uh, film and uh, the time required and dedication required to build anything successful you know, sometimes it goes unseen, but don't don't feel bad for me at all. I'm doing what I love and I'm ready to work. There's nobody in the world that's gonna work harder. I wanna see what my son will do with a camera. What do you think, can you come up with a name today for YouTube? Even if it sits blank for now, just an intro video. We'll test him out, yeah? If he does decide to give it a try, I'll leave a link down below to his channel. If he does it, that's up to him. Don't want to force him. I want to challenge him, but not force him. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you can share? What Sorry. do we do to make the world a better place? Respect. Respect goes a long way. Respect others? Yeah. My in-laws are in the Philippines. When they come back, maybe we can get them involved in a video. My mom lives in Burlington, which is like from here about an hour away. My dad lives in Windsor, which is about four hours away, right next to the Detroit border. I'm sorry, so, it sounds like you're in like 40, no one says an hour. Like yeah, 30, and from 40, here. From this exact spot, man. Look at the non-driver telling dad how to get there. Hey, I'm in there. Yeah, from here it's about an hour. So that's a wrap up. That's a conclusion to today's video. Hopefully it's somewhat entertaining. Uh, during the editing process, I'll break down the parts that are not important, but you guys got to look a little bit at my life growing up, where I grew up, etc. Tomorrow I'm gonna head to the homeless uh, tent cities in downtown Toronto, similar to Skid Row in LA and interview people that are going through difficult times of homelessness. Uh, we'll talk about what, what caused them to be on the street, um, you know, how do they believe the government could help them and, and such. But I appreciate you guys for watching this far in. Uh, any last words you got to say, Tristan? That's it? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, like, had a good day. Yeah, yeah. we got out for Fun a bit. Day. And he's happy I dropped his phone off to get fixed. So it'll be fixed tomorrow. That was off camera. Yes. So that is it. Okay, we'll talk. See you tomorrow.
Why don't you put your hand on it? See, I, do, see, I do my shirt right. so it doesn't have handprints. Try one more time. There you go. Now, now it's out. You're just holding it there. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Let me show them how to do it. See you guys in the next video.